Hey everybody, this is session two of my playthrough through Approach to Thistletop of the Rise of the Ruin Lords Pathfinder Adventure card game. This is one of the weirdest scenarios so far because I drew the villain on the first, the very first card was the villain. So the villain has escaped to one of three locations and Literally, we've only had one turn so far. Like, Valeros has... Valeros' first turn, first card explored, was the villain. So I don't know um, where to go next. I do know that we've closed the Goblin Fortress. Because we've expelled the villain. So essentially now, the villain has escaped. He, he's on the run. Gogmert, the villain. He's on the run. We need to hunt him down. I figure the woods seems like a likely enough place. Valeros is not in the woods, and so it is up to Sione to hunt the the goblin down. Sione has yet to draw up to her hand, so we'll take six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, and she of course has to have a spell in her deck, or in her starting hand, uh, because that's her favored card. So she has one spell. She has an item to help her with combat check. At a d4 to combat, um, I guess that's good. It's, it's really hard to use this item, because I don't really see her... I mean, like, when she goes to combat, I don't know, she has other bonuses going on. So right now her only spell is the Detect Magic, which is a scrying card. Let's read up on the woods. I think we already read that, actually. Yeah, we did. Gnarled and twisted branches support a shadowy forest canopy that allows only enough light to encourage the growth of stinging nettles and other poisonous plants. Despite the tangled plants, swift, sly things dart through the underbrush, but whether they are curious creatures of the woods or hungry predators is difficult to tell. And in this location, undefeated monsters other than the villain or a henchman are banished. So that's the good news. The bad news is that there are four monsters, a henchman and or a villain. We don't know. Well, Sione is not necessarily well armed right now. She doesn't have an attack spell, which is one of those things about her deck that just kind of annoys me. I, I feel like, I guess that's why she's got a an inherent attack, though. But you have to discard a card for that, and that's annoying to me. But anyway, it's, it's uh, part of the game. So, we turn over a timer card, and then she can explore. And she gets a monster straight away. Uh, before the encounter succeeded, a Wisdom 8 check, or you may not play spells with the attack trait. Or weapons. Wow. What's left? Is there anything that we can do here? Well, the Sage, we can recharge the Sage to add a d6 to a non-combat intelligence or wisdom check. Well, so here's the thing, right? This is clearly combat, but it says before the encounter. So I have been judging that before the encounter means that things that say combat don't count. So Valeros, for instance, hasn't been using shields to block damage that happened before the encounter, because the shield specifically says that it blocks combat damage. This sage is the flip, the, the flip version of that, which is recharge it for non-combat. So I am saying that because, yeah, because the shield isn't applicable before the encounter, because that would make it non-combat, that means that this non-combat is valid in this case. So I'm recharging the sage to add a d6 to a wisdom save, and Sione's wisdom is a d6. So that's 2d6 to try to achieve an 8. That's a 5. And a 2 is a 7. 
Well, that's just too bad, because I don't think Sione has a chance without using either an attack spell or a, um... What, what, what about this? This... This is Alchemical ob Object Basic. It doesn't say anything about a... Weapon? It doesn't say anything about an attack. So I guess for once, this Blast Stone could actually work well. So Sioni has a melee uh, ability of a d4, and I gave her a plus one for exactly this reason, or for this kind of scenario. So she's got a, an automatic one, and then she's got a d4. I'm going to banish this Blast Stone, and she'll, she'll, she'll roll two d4s. So she pretty much has to get a 3 and a 4 to succeed. Well, she got a 1. And a 3. So she got a 5. So, 5 is not 8. So Sioni is going to take 3 damage. So she'll discard 2 Blessings and an Acolyte. Wait a minute. Nope, that's true. Yep. Wait a minute. Is this Blast Arcane? No, it's Alchemical. I Okay. Yep, so she loses three cards from her hand, and this guy is not defeated, so he gets shuffled back into the location deck. So that didn't go terribly well for Sioni. I was really hoping it wouldn't be a combat, her first draw, but, I mean, I guess that's just this, that's this location. Or this scenario, rather. Lots of combat. Okay, so that's her turn. I am not... Well, she can't... I have nothing else to do. So I'm going to de deal back up to... Draw back up to six for her. She's probably in a better place now for combat, to be honest. Yeah, she's got that force missile. She's got some protection, bracers of protection. So she's a little bit better off. But that was a rough start. Uh, Valeros, of course, had kind of a rough start previously as well. But anyway, it's his turn now, and so he is going to draw, or rather, flip over a timer card, and then join Sioni in the woods. Which is really, I guess, she should have cast Detect Magic to scry. That's what she should have done. But she didn't. I jumped in. That could, have, that could be the thing that costs me the scenario, to be honest. He's going to explore now. Blessing a Torag. That's a good thing. So he can do Dex. No, strength of four. Well, that would be what he would want to do. So he's going to roll his strength die. He gets a ten on his strength die. So he acquires the Blessing of Torag. Oh, and he needed to have drawn up to four. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll still draw four because that's what he would, he would have had that in his hand. So he's got two Blessings, a Bastard Sword, a Standard Bearer, and a Long Sword. Okay, so that's the end of his turn, but you can't end your turn with more cards than you are supposed to have in your hand. Oh, that's right. You know what? That goblin was not supposed to go back into the deck, because in the woods, undefeated monsters, other than villains and henchmen, and it wasn't either of those, are banished. He should have gone back into the box. So if we encounter him again, I'll have to banish him, I guess. Okay, so can't end my turn with five, so I'm going to just banish... I guess I'll banish the Blessing of the Gods and then explore again. That's him. That's the War Chanter. So that's not there. He got banished because he was encountered in the woods. He was undefeated by Sioni, but that also meant that he got, he got moved out. Okay, so cool. So now we'll explore again. Ah, a zombie. Okay, perfect. Um, the zombie is immune to, yeah, have the... Okay, so, it's a 9 to defeat a zombie. Well, we have... I mean, this is... This is Valeros. This is where he shines. He's got a bastard sword, so he can use his normal d10 for his strength, an extra d10 for the bastard sword, and then also he's got a plus 3 attribute bonus for his melee, so we're looking for a 6 on 2d10, on 
That's a five. He literally can't roll lower than a one, so he kills the zombie. So that's good. Yep, okay. So I could spend another blessing to tick over, or uh, rather to explore again. But if you'll recall, in the previous scenario, in the previous uh, round, we closed a location because the villain was the first card we drew with that many cards in it. I'm feeling okay about the timer deck. I'm, I'm more concerned just about general health of characters at this point. So I'm going to just turn it over to uh, Sioni, flip over a timer card, and have her explore. Okay, Tangle Tooth. This is a henchman. It's an animal cougar, combat of eight. Each character at this location encounters Tangle Tooth. If any character doesn't defeat, she is undefeated. If defeated, you may immediately attempt to close. Yeah, okay. We're getting rid of Tangle Tooth either way because she's in the woods, but. Both of these characters are supposed to attack or, or have to fight Tangletooth. And it requires an 8 to defeat. I think the smart thing to do here would be to use a force missile for Sioni. Uh, force missile. That's 2d4. And she's got a plus 2 to her arcane. So she needs a 6 to defeat Tangletooth. That's a 2, so that's a total of 4 now. Uh, and then that's a 5, so that's 7, 8, 9. So that's that's more than 8. So Sioni succeeds at her, her attempt. Valeros, of course, can use his bastard sword, so it's the old song and dance of 2d10 with a plus 3 to melee. Uh, so that's going to be a 5. He needs a 5 across 2d10. And that's a 9 on the first d10. He succeeds against this creature. So this henchman is now dead. Which means that the we, we can close this location, potentially, by succeeding at a Wisdom or Survival 6 check. This caused us some problem in a previous scenario. We don't have any helpful... Well, we've got a blessing that we could expend. Possibly. Potentially. I think it's... Whose turn is it anyway? It's Sioni's turn, actually. So we could do a... We could do a... Yeah, we could, we could discard a... Blessing of the Gods to add a, a die to this check. And this check would be a Wisdom check on a d6 for Sioni. Yep. So I think that might be the way to go. Just discard the, God, the Blessing of the Gods, take 2d6, and hope for a 6. Well, I didn't mean a 6 on one die. I'm in a six on two die, but I'll take a six on one die. Cool. The woods has been closed now. Now, this is one of those weird situations again, though, where we don't actually know what's in the woods. And it could be that the villain is in here. We don't know. And, it, and the rules are very, very confusing about what you're supposed to do in this, in this case. Last time... I just kind of stored up all the closed locations that could have the villain in it and then just kept exploring until I found the villain. But I, I don't know that that's the intended... I, I'm pretty sure that's not the intention because that timer deck obviously doesn't care. And, and I mean, it would be silly if, if the villain just so happened to be the last card on the last location that you... you 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 know you closed all the locations and then you had to keep going through all of the cards just to get to the villain because yeah so that doesn't work so i don't know i mean there is a school of thought that when you close a location you're supposed to then look through the cards 
banish all cards but the villain, and then face the villain at some point. But I think I think what I do makes sense. I'm going to just add that to my stack of closed locations. And then I'm going to go to a new location. Well, not, not on this turn, but I will. The next, next scenario, uh, next round, I'll go to an, a new location. Specifically, it will be Valeros going to that location. And we'll continue to see if the, we'll, we'll look and see if the villain's anywhere to be found. And if not, then we'll go to the next location, look for the villain, and, and then we'll know more information and we can, we can do whatever we need to. So end of Sione's turn. Drawing back up to six. Valeros is set to go for his next turn. So yeah, so on the next uh, round, I will increment the, the timer deck and I will start Valeros' turn to start exploring the Nethel Maze. Thanks for watching.